Hi, welcome to another edition of Motor Age Magazine's video series, The Trainer. This month's topic, hub bearings, service, inspection, and replacement. Hey, the job at Motor Age Magazine is to make sure that we bring the most current, accurate, relevant, up-to-date information that we can to the working professional technicians in this country. So when we decided to take on the topic of hub bearings, rather than try to show it to you all ourselves, we went to one of the sources that we know knows about bearings. That, of course, is Timken. Timken's bearings were first used in horse-drawn carriages. They've been in the bearing business a long time, and they've given us permission to share some videos that will show you the basic service and inspection procedures and replacement procedures for hub bearings. One thing in mind though, this vehicle that you're using is specific, it's a GM product. As always, make sure that you review this OE service information for procedures and specs uh, before you tackle the job. So here we go. Let's take a look at hub bearing service and inspection courtesy of our good friends at Temkin. Perform a hand rotation check on the wheel. Next, grasp the wheel at the 9 and 3 o'clock positions. Push while oscillating and also pull while oscillating the wheel. Perform a second check following this same procedure, grasping the wheel at the 12 and 6 o'clock positions. In addition, listen and feel for roughness. After making all preliminary inspections, check the hub bearing assembly more precisely. If applicable, remove the wheel cover to access the lug nuts. Remove the lug nuts and the wheel and tire assembly. Next, remove the caliper from the caliper mounting bracket. To prevent damage to the brake line due to the weight of the caliper, make sure the caliper is properly supported with either an S-hook or a piece of wire. Remove the caliper mounting bracket. And then remove the brake rotor. Rotate the hub bearing assembly by hand. Bearings normally do not loosen up under typical use. If the hub bearing assembly appears to be loose, the bearing may be damaged. The axle nut may have backed off, or the axle nut may not have been properly clamped. Any roughness, looseness, or noise from the bearing is an indication that the bearing is damaged and needs to be replaced. To check a hub bearing assembly's internal clearance, a dial indicator with a magnetic base is required. To obtain accurate readings from the dial indicator, it is important to thoroughly clean and smooth the surfaces where the dial indicator base and tip will be placed. Carefully use a fine file, wire brush, emery cloth, or honing stone as appropriate to remove any debris, nicks, or burrs. The dial indicator base should be placed rigidly on the knuckle or a secure portion of the suspension. When setting the dial indicator tip, the indicator itself should have ample travel for the variation around the face. Position the indicator tip perpendicular on the wheel pilot as close to the center of the hub bearing assembly as possible. This will provide the most accurate results. Grasp the wheel flange at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions and push while oscillating the hub bearing assembly approximately 90 degrees side to side at least five times. Set the dial indicator to zero. Next, 
pull while oscillating the hub bearing assembly approximately 90 degrees side to side at least five times. Proper loading and oscillation is necessary in order to fully seat the bearings. Observe the total indicator movement. If it exceeds 0.004 inches, replace the hub bearing assembly. When any symptoms or visual signs of premature wear are experienced, immediate action is required. The hub bearing must be replaced. Failure to replace the hub bearing may result in severe damage, which could include loss of steering control or a wheel separation, creating a risk of serious bodily injury. Prior to removing a hub bearing assembly and installing a new hub bearing assembly, make sure you have the proper tools. If applicable, remove the wheel cover to access the lug nuts. Remove the lug nuts and the wheel and tire assembly. Next, remove the caliper from the caliper mounting bracket. To prevent damage to the brake line due to the weight of the caliper, make sure the caliper is properly supported with either an S-hook or a piece of wire. Remove the caliper mounting bracket and then remove the brake rotor. Remove the dust cover, if applicable, to gain access to the axle nut. Then, using an axle nut socket, remove the axle nut. Always refer to the vehicle manufacturer's instructions regarding nut replacement. If the vehicle is equipped with an ABS sensor wire, make a note of its orientation in relation to the hub bearing assembly. Disconnect the sensor wire from the clips that are used to properly position it, located in the wheel well and frame area. Also, disconnect the sensor wire from its mating connector point. Remove the bolts that attach the bearing to the steering knuckle. Prior to removing the hub bearing assembly from the knuckle and axle shaft, it may be necessary to free up the hub bearing assembly from the axle shaft. In some cases, a puller may be required. Care should be taken not to damage the knuckle or axle shaft. Take note of the position of the backing plate and other components so that they can be reinstalled in the same fashion. Remove the hub bearing assembly. Clean the steering knuckle of any debris or burrs. Carefully use a fine file, wire brush, emery cloth, or honing stone as appropriate to remove any debris, nicks, or burrs. Inspect the surfaces against which the hub bearing seats as well as the spline teeth for wear and burrs. Now you're ready to install a new hub bearing assembly. Correctly position the surrounding components such as the backing plate with respect to the hub bearing assembly. Make sure the components are properly oriented prior to installing them onto the steering knuckle. Carefully check the positioning of the splines on the axle shaft while installing the hub bearing assembly. The proper positioning of these two components is critical so that the splines are not damaged. Note. Never force the hub bearing assembly onto the shaft or strike with a hammer. Install the bolts that attach the bearing to the knuckle and torque them to the vehicle manufacturer's specifications using a torque wrench. Note, because proper torque is required, an impact wrench is not recommended. If applicable, be sure to properly attach the ABS sensor cable to the vehicle. Position the sensor wire into the clips in the wheel well and frame area. Next, connect the sensor wire to its mating connection point.
Replace the brake rotor and caliper mounting bracket. All components should be free of debris and burrs. Place thread locking compound on the caliper mounting bracket bolts per the vehicle manufacturer's specifications. Install the caliper mounting bracket bolts and torque them to the vehicle manufacturer's specifications. Install the caliper on the caliper mounting bracket being careful not to damage the rubber boots. Place the manufacturer's recommended lubricant on the caliper pins. Install the pins and torque them to the vehicle manufacturer's specifications. Prior to installing the axle nut, apply the brake to prevent axle rotation or damage to transmission and transaxle components. This can be accomplished by using either a brake pedal depressor or having an assistant depress the brake pedal. Install the axle nut. Follow the vehicle manufacturer's instructions for proper tightening of the axle nut. Install the dust cover. Replace the wheel and tire assembly. Install the lug nuts. Follow the vehicle manufacturer's instructions for lug nut tightening sequence, torque specifications, and if applicable, retorque requirements. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of The Trainer. Hey, I'm Pete Meyer, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next month.